The new Crane M3 gimbal is finally here in my hands in the AMA TV studio. I've put it through rigorous testing with my Canon M50 and a few fun lenses. And today I'm gonna to share those tests along with my thoughts and my continued excitement for this unique new gimbal. The reason I'm so excited about this is because it really fits the gap between compact gimbals designed to handle point and shoots, action cams, and smartphones, and the strong gimbal beasts built to handle full frame cameras with super long lenses and be carted around in black Pelican cases by professional videographers. Prior to this gimbal, there weren't many options for users with crop sensor mirrorless cameras, the camera's right in the middle between compact and pro. Using a gimbal that's too small with a camera like this results in a challenging balancing experience and not the smoothest of footage, but using a gimbal that's too large results in great footage and an easy balance, but it doesn't exactly fit the small, minimal vibe and convenience of crop sensor mirrorless cameras, meaning you have to carry a huge gimbal around. So the Crane M3 is small and compact, but strong enough to handle the Canon M50, making for a perfect vlogging setup. Finally, I hope. Today I'm gonna to focus on using the Crane M3 gimbal with the Canon M50 Mark II and the Sigma 16 mm f1.4 lens, which is what I consider to be the perfect vlogging camera lens combo. This review is not sponsored by Ji Yoon. However, they did send this gimbal over to me after I explained that my people needed to hear about it and see it in action. So thank you Ji Yoon for sending over this gimbal. And of course, all of this great gear will be linked in the video description below. So before we get into testing, let's review the exciting design and features of the Crane M3. It's got this sporty yet rugged look, a white gimbal with black accents and sizzling pops of red. I love the styling on this thing, especially with my white Canon M50. The gimbal and the camera just fit together like a glove, both aesthetically and functionally. The Crane M3 weighs just 1.54 pounds, and with the Canon M50 and the Sigma 16 millimeter, it comes to 3.28 pounds, which is definitely a manageable weight to hold at arm's distance for vlogging. The Crane M3 folds up very small, which means you don't need a big camera or backpack or Pelican case to carry it. Here I am just tucking it into a small messenger style camera bag with the Canon M50 attached. How convenient is that? I think this easy pack up is critical for that grab and go style of vlogging where you're not necessarily planning out shots and taking the time to set up and prepare for them, but rather reacting to the situation you're in and grabbing your vlogging setup as the moment calls for it. This is also great for parents whose kids do cute things sporadically and without warning. Follow me camera. <laughs> but with all that being said, probably the very best feature of the Crane M3 is this built-in fill-in light. Integrated into the gimbal, I've never ever before seen anything like this and this is so convenient because even if you are in a bright light situation, just having a little bit of extra fill to kind of fill in the shadows is gonna make everything look more smooth on your face or your subject's face. And of course, if you're in a low light situation, it's gonna save the day as well. The convenient little wheel on the side controls it and you can even adjust color temperature to change the look of the scene or just match the ambient lighting that you are in. And if you wanna take things a step further even, they've got these cute little magnetic filters that you can snap onto the light to really make things fun. That's the blue. The Crane M3 operates in six different modes, including the standard pan follow, follow, lock, POV mode, go mode, vortex mode, and portrait mode, which is vertical. So you can film for Instagram stories, reels, shorts, or the TikToks. And if you'd like to learn more about how each of these modes can be used, then I will link to an older video I made about gimbal modes, which is a fun show and tell of the basics. The Crane M3 has got this handy little touchscreen and joystick as all good gimbals do, and some convenient adjustment wheels to control different functions and settings. It's got the familiar front trigger button, which I use constantly to switch between front facing and vlogging selfie mode. There is a one quarter inch expansion port on the side, which means you can mount up an external monitor or mic or light, but you don't need a light because you already have one. The gimbal comes with these perfectly sized cables to connect cameras. Although I am disappointed to report that I was unable to get the Canon M50 or the Sony ZV-E10 to do anything as a result of these connections. In fact, Jian has published a control sheet stating which cameras do work, and you can see the ZV-E10 is blanked out on here, and the Canon M50 is not even listed, which is actually expected. Now, the thing about this is, it's not the fault of the gimbal. I think, and I could be wrong about this, but I think the way gimbals work when connected to cameras is they work in the same way that remote controls do. And for the Canon M50, there is pretty much no remote control that will work. 
in video mode to control the camera. Now, even if you go into the menu and enable the remote control settings, I've just never been able to get any remote control to work and I have tested many. So these cameras just don't come with that feature of being able to be controlled by something externally. The Canon M50, the Mark II, and the same goes for the ZV-E10. So it's not the gimbal's fault, it's kind of the camera's fault. And it is kind of a bummer because it would be nice to do that. But the other thing is, I've always been perfectly content just operating my camera with my camera functions when I'm using a gimbal and then using the gimbal functions, the joystick and such, to operate the gimbal. It would be nice to can power on off the camera with the gimbal, but I'm totally fine just hitting the on off. Uh, recording mode as usual and then changing the settings as usual, especially on the touch screen on the Canon M50. It's going to be a good gimbal experience even though you can't connect everything. In fact, it might even be easier. I don't know. And now let me really just show you what this basic vlogging setup looks like with the Crane M3, the Canon EOS M50, and the kit lens that pretty much comes with the M50. It comes in the kit. It's at very little extra cost to buy this lens with the camera. So it's not the best lens in the world, but it's a great starter lens. It gives you a nice wide vlogging shot. And the main limitation of this lens is that it is an F 3.5 to 6.3, which isn't the widest aperture, but that's why later on we're gonna get into that Sigma 16 millimeter lens, which is a 1.4. But this is a good uh, lens for starters and it works really well with this vlogging setup because it is so tiny and compact, this lens, and it just kind of makes everything work together really well. So this is what the basic vlogging shot looks like with this setup, and you can see uh, the crane just keeps it nice and smooth. Definitely uh, gives it some wiggle room to show off, you know, the background and what you're what you're walking around showing off. So that's fun. So let me just walk along this hedge here, show you what a good high-speed walking shot looks like. This uh, gimbal is very smooth. It's very smooth and floaty. Um, for your handheld walking, vlogging shots, your walk and talks. And if I do get into the more shaded areas, I'm just gonna pop on that fill light. Ta-da! So that's super convenient. Super smooth, super smooth, super smooth, super smooth. I'm skipping. But this works very well. Very exciting, because the whole thing is just so lightweight. So this whole setup was super easy to balance. I am utilizing the EOS M50's flip out screen as my own little personal viewfinder and I can easily flip that around if I wanna shoot something in front of me and see it in the back. I am utilizing the one quarter inch expansion port on the Crane M3. Right now I've got this old um, like phone clip arm on it and I'm holding the road mic. Although you can use this expansion port to hook up any sort of magic arm. There's all kinds of um, cold shoe clamps you can put on there. I'll link to a few of those below as well. See what kind of options are out there because I need a new one myself. And I'm using it to hold the road mic receiver and then I've got the road mic Actually, I'm projecting to this mic, but <laughs> just to show you, you can easily hook up pretty much anything to this expansion arm. And the great thing about utilizing it is that it's not adding weight to the camera. It's just on the gimbal. So anytime you're, you have the mic here or you have anything attached to the camera, that's going to you know, make things just a little bit uh, more difficult to balance. But you, this is adding weight to the camera, but you can still easily use that as your viewfinder. You can also put a viewfinder down here. So many options with the expansion port. Now I'm going to switch over to the M6 Mark II, which is going to pose some different benefits and issues, and we'll talk about those. All right, so now I've got it with the Canon EOS M6 Mark II, another crop sensor mirrorless camera, and it's working beautifully, brilliantly. Right now, I've got the Sigma 30 millimeter F1.4 on there, and it's a very nice size for this. This lens is not wide enough for vlogging, but it is a beautiful B-roll lens. So this could be a good B-roll situation overall. Of course, I can put that uh, M50 kit lens on there or any other M mount lens um, and really just get exactly what we need. Nice and smooth shots. Oh, okay, that is gonna hit with the screen up. But you can always use that expansion port to mount an external monitor. Problem solved. Yep, things are looking very smooth, very good here. I think overall the Crane M3 is going to be able to handle any of these crop sensor mirrorless cameras very, very well. The thing that would cause problems, if anything, is going to be if you put a lens on it that's too big or too long. So I don't think mounting up an EFS 
lens with an adapter, I think that would just be too much. I think it's best to stick with the M mount lenses, even though there aren't many of them in existence. I think what we need for vlogging is definitely there. And like I said, I'll link some below. Um, and we are gonna talk about that Sigma 16 millimeter next because the problem with that lens even though it's wide, it's a little bit too long, like physically long. When you refer to long lenses, it usually means a longer focal length, but it's too um, physically long. It doesn't mean it can't work. It absolutely can work. So I'm gonna get into like a detailed balancing of that to show you exactly what I mean. Okay, so moving on now, I'm gonna show you a quick balancing demonstration. I wouldn't say it's a full tutorial in depth, but just a quick like setup of how the Canon M50 goes on to the Crane M3 with the Sigma 60 millimeter lens. Now this lens is gonna be longer and heavier than the kit lens so if you're using the kit lens you're gonna have no problem at all this is a little bit more of a challenge but really not that big of a deal so first of all we've got this quick release plate which is so awesome because it's so simple and streamlined and it's got this chunky screw on the bottom so you don't actually need a flathead screwdriver to twist this screw and the whole process is just gonna be so much easier. I'm kind of comparing this to what I had to do on the June Weebl S, which is a gimbal that I love, but it's not really made for crop sensor mirrorless, it's made for bigger cameras. So in order to put that on, I would have to mount this plate and then mount this on top and then that went into the gimbal. And to change anything, I had to unscrew both of these and I, sure enough, better have had a screwdriver to do so. So first I'm gonna lock all three axes on the gimbal. I'm gonna twist that guy on just somewhere in the middle for now, and then just pop it in. Nice and secure. The front back axis, axis is gonna be the most important. It's gonna to wanna to be front heavy. So just wiggle it back enough until it's not. Also when balancing a gimbal, of course, always have everything exactly how it's going to be um, when you're using it. So I'm gonna flip the screen out and popping it up is where you have the problem. And this is pretty much a problem with every single um, small gimbal I've ever used, is that the top of the Canon M50 is gonna hit this back axis. I do not think that we need a viewfinder on this camera, or they should at least make a similar camera without a viewfinder. There is the M6 Mark II, which is gonna work really well on this, but I know we're all, a lot of us are using M50s because of the flip out screen. Anyway, so you wanna adjust this part so it slides up just enough so that this is feeling balanced on a back front manner, but it's touching. So basically you want it all the way up so it's just, just touching, but it can wiggle past. It might be tempting when adjusting this to just push it all the way down so that doesn't happen, but then your, your balance this way <laughs> won't work as well. And if you guys wanna see a full tutorial on balancing this, I can do that, but this is just a quick overview. And the next really easy one is this one. Unlock that because the screen's out, it's gonna be leaning that way. And just get it right there in the middle. It's actually really nice because they've got a little marker there to show you um, when it's in the center. That's pretty cool, never really seen that before. Little gimbal balancing support there. And then on the side, I'm gonna lock these other two, turn it to the side, and just make sure it's pointing forward. So if, it, if it's pointing down, you're gonna to wanna to undo this and yank it back. And if it's pointing up, you would do the opposite. But that one is pretty good for now. That, that adjustment isn't quite as finicky as like maybe the, the left-right adjustment. Okay, now unlocking everything so we can turn this bad boy on. And there we go. It's also really cool. In the main menu, it's got a thing that says balance. And it shows you whether or not anything is unbalanced or I guess whether or not there's strain. So there shouldn't be strain on anything if it's just sitting flat, but you could see if I move it side to side, some of those little, little uh, lines will light up a bit. So as you can see, it does work with the Canon M50 and the Sigma 16, but again, similar to the Feutech G6 Max, which was a gimbal that was not as strong as this one, not as nice as this one, but it was the same size profile, which is what I liked about it. Um, this is a step up from that, but you're still going to have the same problem. So it's still going to hit the back. You can flip it upside down just barely, <laughs> just barely, because this lens is just a little bit long. So long story short, I would say again that with the Sigma 16 millimeter on the M50, you're going to get a stable vlogging shot. So you're going to be able to do the classic handheld walk and talk and get a lot less camera shake than you would if you were not using a gimbal. But in order to perform 
crazy gimbal maneuvers and you know flipping it upside down which actually might work let me try yeah it's going to be pushing it because things are just going to hit because the sigma 16 millimeter lens is just a little bit too long let's see if it flips into vertical portrait yeah okay so so it does it but i can tell it's i can tell it's struggling I think we just need to get rid of that viewfinder, make everything easier. Now let's say you weren't doing the vlogging lens thing and you wanted to use another Sigma prime lens f1.4. This is the 56 millimeter. There's also the 30 millimeter, which is gorgeous and just a tiny bit longer, not as long as the 16. So we've got this balanced on here, pop that on, and this is going to work brilliantly. Flip it into sling mode, flip it into portrait mode. That's no problem at all. Go mode is gonna give us the fastest, kind of like back and forth. We can really do it all. We can do it all. And there you have it, my friends, a very close to perfect vlogging setup thanks to the new Crane M3 gimbal. I really do think this is the best gimbal on the market right now to pair with your crop sensor mirrorless cameras, especially if you're just looking to take out the shake in your videos and stabilize some simple vlogging footage. You're not gonna be able to go crazy with this gimbal with these cameras. You, If you wanna do that, then I recommend the Weeble S, the Weeble 2. There's a new one, haven't tried it, but it's supposed to be amazing. But as far as for portability and compactability, I am so stoked about the Weeble S. I'm sorry, the Crane M3, because I'm gonna be able to carry it around in my purse, and that just means so much to me, just being able to grab and go. There's great value in that. So let me know what questions you guys have about this gimbal. I'll definitely do a full vlogging setup of like what I consider the perfect vlogging setup as I have more time to experiment with it. I just wanted to get this video out there to you guys quickly because I know so many of you have paired the Sigma 16 millimeter with the M50 as a result of these videos and recommendations. So I really wanted to answer that question for you first, whether or not this works with this gimbal. But moving forward, I'll be able to answer some more questions. So let me know what you got, and I will see you guys in the very next video. Bye.